This is Group 1 and we're presenting our Jed 110 video for the Ecological Reservoir of Water. Let's go! Ta -da! This year's theme for Earth Day is Protect Our Species. Rising temperatures and weather fluctuations are putting millions of species at risk of extinction, while others are being forced to migrate to other habitats. Last October, the CBSN Originals team investigated invasive species. They are non-native organisms which enter an ecosystem and cause harm. Here's a clip from the documentary Burmese Rapidly growing, consuming, adapting, they conquer, jeopardizing local economies, threatening human health and devastating entire ecosystems. Invasive species, they may not sound very threatening, but these invaders, large and small, have devastating effects on wildlife and human life. However, not all native species are invasive. To be invasive, there are three points, namely, it must adapt to the new, the new area easily, can reproduce quickly, and it must harm property, the economy, or the native organisms. Many of these are introduced accidentally, majority by humans. They thrive because they outcompete species for food or because there are no predators. They can invade humans as well. The main emphasis on deterring is true prevention because each living thing has a designated role to contribute to creating the balance in our world. The existence of one invasive destroys this balance. It is our role to prevent it before it's too late. Biodiversity represents the prosperity of all biological resources that are available to us. Each and every species, no matter how small or how big it is, has an important role in our ecosystem. But during these past few years, the Earth's biodiversity is declining faster than ever before. The main cause of the fall of biodiversity can be traced to the influence of humans on the ecosystem. These influences are over-exploitation of natural resources, habitat loss caused by human activities, pollution that destroys the habitats of plants and animals due to toxic substances, and lastly, overpopulation that has contributed to the destruction of natural ecosystems and has led to the mass extinction of species. As we have seen, humans have deeply modified and changed the environment, especially the territories of other species. These modifications and changes have led us to a natural phenomenon called biodiversity depletion. The present levels of the said phenomenon are higher than the natural rate, leading it to cause global concern. To have deeper understanding about water cycle, water cycle is also known as hydrologic cycle, which describes as the continuous movement of water in the various components of Earth's climate system. It starts with the evaporation of water from the ocean and goes into the atmosphere where it is inverted across the face of the earth in the form of water vapor. 
eventually, it will condensate in the cloud and precipitate in the form of rain, rain snow, snow, sleet, sleet or hail, hail and goes close to the Earth's surface. surface. This process, process of precipitation can fall from open bodies, bodies of water, water and be intercepted and transpired by vegetation, which becomes surface runoff and or recharged groundwater. Water that infiltrates into the ground surface can percolate into deeper zone and become part of groundwater storage to eventually reappear as steam flow or become mixed with saline groundwater in the coastal zone. Finally, water re-enters the ocean from which it will eventually proceed to the process of evaporation, completing the water cycle. The marine ecosystem is actually one of the two types of aquatic ecosystems. The other one is for the fresh waters. When we think of the word marine, ocean and seas immediately come to our minds. But estuaries, mangrove swamps, coral reefs, and coastal marshes are also types of the marine ecosystem. Its biotic components consist of plants, animals, fungi, algae, and bacteria. Its abiotic components consist of sunlight, temperature, moisture, wind or water currents, soil type, and nutrient availability. Marine life is a wide variety of organisms that have evolved as a result of the changes in the environment. These organisms are not distributed evenly in the salt waters. Abiotic components of the ecosystem create different habitats and dictate what type of organisms will inhabit them. The marine waters can be divided into the photic and the photic zones. Photic zone is the region where light still penetrates the waters, so plants and other photosynthetic organisms grow here. And the sea animals inhabit the zone for the abundance of food, both flora and fauna. A photic zone now is the region where light can no more penetrate the waters. Hence, the food source of animals here are animals and plants that sink down from the photic zone and one another. As water depth increases, life concentration decreases. Invasive species rapidly adapt and evolve quickly. However, there are two things that are needed for rapid evolutionary adaptation, namely genetic diversity and long periods of time. And often, invasive species lack both of these. And so, we turn to epigenetics, which may offer an answer as to how they thrive and adapt so quickly. Epigenetics enables the rapid adaptation of an organism to environmental changes without affecting its genetic diversity. This makes it likely to be involved in the processes which invasive species undergo. A notable species would be the marbled crayfish, first discovered in Germany in the 1990s, now being banned in Europe and some parts of the United States. This aquatic species has caused concern for being an invasive species. Characterized as a ravenous species that eats anything from rotting leaves to small insects native in European countries, it is now being found across four continents. Research shows that there have been high levels of DNA methylation diversity in the population, despite having reduced levels of genetic diversity, which shows that mechanisms such as DNA methylation to adapt their genome to specific environmental conditions. This demonstrates invasive species utilization of epigenetic changes as a means for rapid evolutionary adaptation despite the low levels of genetic variation which shows their rapid response to changes in the environment. Water is 71% of the Earth's surface, but only 0.2% of it is available for human use. In addition, the consistency of fresh water in soil and groundwater reprocesses is of great concern because the water that is available for humans needs to have appropriate mineral content. Both natural processes and anthropogenic influences have affected the quality of surface water in rural and urban areas. Having this said, water is getting more insufficient as the population across the world continuously increases. 
The following are some of the anthropogenic factors affecting water quality, agriculture, use of fertilizers, animal husbandry activities, aquaculture, deforestation, pollution caused by industrial effluents and domestic sewage, and mining. The majority of pollutants affecting the quality of water in rural areas are basic inorganic ions, more complex organic molecules. The wastes of people will pollute the environment, the land, and water resources. It causes an impact to the quality of water from the rain and water resources. This certain principle can help benefit the rise of invasive species. Polycentric governance is more of a fundamental and complex concept that adheres to the needs of the ecosystem and provides solutions that can truly benefit this ecosystem in the long run. They have also raised three challenges for pursuing this type of social ecological system, which in turn can help promote the deter of invasive species and yearn for ecological development in the environment. Number one, the balance for redundancy and experimentation. Number two, negotiating trade-offs between various features of ecosystems. And number three, good benefits of common resources and skill shopping. The bigger challenges will serve as an obstacle for us to off further operationalize this concept into the ecosystem. But it's possible if we reiterate its main principles, as economic governance is very significant in providing solutions to the economy. So there are six ways that we can help that it can help providing opportunities for learning and experimentation enables broader levels of participation improves connectivity trace modularity it improves potential for response diversity, diversity and builds redundancy that can minimize and correct errors in government and that's the infrastructure and purpose of polycentric governance to the ecosystem Invasive species are a type of species that invade foreign land, cause damage and harm to human health, and in some cases, extinction of wildlife in the ecosystem. Invasive species are a type of species that invade foreign land, cause damage and harm to human health, and in some cases, extinction of wildlife in the ecosystem. Since they are new to an area, they do not have any natural predators, since the ones found in the area aren't compatible with hunting them due to the lack of natural tools to use. They can hunt their prey since they co-evolve specifically with the ecosystem. The lack of its natural predators helps the invasive species thrive in foreign land. Long-term effects of the invasive species cause are either further damage and degrade the environment while causing health issues and because of them consuming almost every natural resource. Other species that depend on those resources for food and shelter have difficulty living and dying. We can do our part and try to help the ecosystem from invasive species by making sure we properly clean the equipment we use for hiking and fishing, helping the volunteer work and clearing out invasive species, do not take all their food from an area because it could contain organisms inside it, etc. The simple steps could go a long way in preventing the degradation of the ecosystem via invasive species. Consequences will be made to expedite their existence in impacts includes cause of soil erosion, biodiversity loss, agricultural loss and human health risk, rapid growth, jeopardizing economies, long-term damages, and invasive species will continue to move to new territories. The problem invasive species produce on global scale loss that can affect the future and even thousands of inhabitants because of their ability to disrupt and 
contributes to its damages to the economy, ecosystem, and human health. With all the gathered data, it has been proven that invasive species has integrated successes with epigenetics, affecting the environmental system, whether the relevance of this information remains vital to not just the water ecosystem, but every other type that can affect our way of living. While invasive species continue to cause damage, we need to take into account the role of humans. Let me ask you this, is it for the common good or downfall of our ecosystem? We are an integral part of this environment through contributing to protecting the ecosystem by being the sole defenders of this endangered species against the invasive one. After all, we are the main contributors on changes and effects of our climate change. Humans are both the cause and answer to invasive species. The main point here is that humans can either be the one to prevent the chaos and imbalances of this environment or the one that will deter the progress for environmental improvement and destruction of biodiversity. Having the role and responsibility to protect the environment, humans combat invasive species through prevention. Emphasis on deterring it by preventing because each living thing has a designated role to contribute to the infrastructure of creating balance in our world. The existence of one invasive can destroy the balance of food. It is our role to prevent it before it's too late.